I am uh, Dan Childers representing the other urban LTER program. We are based in Phoenix, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I'm joined by, by Marta Berbes, who is um, one of the key um, people involved in our scenarios and futures research team. Um, at the time when I invited Marta to join us, I was counting on us spending much of the week in person, doing a lot of breakout, face-to-face -face breakout work, thinking about the future. Um, and I'm going to have to wait. We've, when we ever get to the point where we're real humans again, I'm going to have to buy Marta several drinks because I think she's basically spending the week getting inundated with ecology. Um, I, I'm sure, in fact, I'm sure that's what's happening. Um, I am disappointed that we are not hosting all of y'all here in Phoenix this week. Um, but the reality is that we're currently experiencing a particularly early and record-breaking heat wave. Um, and so I suspect that most of y'all are not disappointed that you're actually not here. Um, a little bit of quick news um, from the CAP program. Um, we just two days ago joined the EB. Um, we have a scheduled uh, site review by NSF in October of 2020, um, which is later this year, obviously. Um, we'll be back to hosting the, the Science Council meeting thanks to the EB's decision next May, and hopefully it will not be uh, 100 and plus degrees when you're here next May. Um, and then, as uh, much as I shudder to think, we've got to already start thinking about our next renewal proposal. Um, so with only five minutes, three minutes of which I wasted trying to figure out the technology here, I want to just talk about one project that we're spinning up now. Um, and then because it's spinning up now, we, um, we're, we're very excited about it because of, of some of the things that it's going to do for the future of CAP. Um, and effectively, what we're looking at is feedbacks between nature in city, which is what we refer to as urban ecological infrastructure. And you can see that UEI, as we refer to it, is very central to our current conceptual framework. Um, and feedbacks between nature and the city, or UEI, um, the services that it provides, and the perceptions, decisions, and actions of people. Um, and so there's a big, long question in blue there that I will shorten for you in a couple of slides, but fundamentally what this project is doing is looking at how the proximity of people's neighborhoods to various forms of urban ecological infrastructure and how the socio-demographics of those neighborhoods affect people's perceptions about nature, in the city and the, the related decisions and actions they take associated with nature in the city. So the tools we're using to do this sort of deep social ecological integration here at CAP, um, the most important one is the Phoenix Area Social Survey. We call it PASS. Um, the PASS is done every five years um, and we will be doing it again, administering it again next year. <clears throat> PASS is done in 12 neighborhoods. You can see on the map here, um, those 12 neighborhoods are identified in that yellowish beige color. Um, they're scattered throughout uh, the, the valley um, in a very strategic way. Um, and so we're using those data, data from the past, um, combined with our sub-meter resolution land use land cover um, change data, or the land use land cover data, which you see here on the map, and then combining those also with our intense bird censuses that have, we do um, have been doing for 20 years now. Um, and, and so some of the things we already know about the relationship between these three key data sets um, is we know about people's perceptions about the desert that surrounds Phoenix. Um, we know people's perceptions about bird diversity in their neighborhoods and how they feel about the, the, the variety of birds in their neighborhood. Um, and we know about um, people's perceptions about ecosystem services provided by UEI and also ecosystem disservices provided by UEI. And so uh, if we think then a little bit more deeply about that last bullet that I just pointed out to you, what we're talking about here is perceptions people have about nature in the city um, relative to um, the actual nature, which is urban ecological infrastructure. Um, and Kelly Larson's um, paper that came out last year, um, she talked about the relationships of perceptions that people have about of ecosystem services in the form of, of, of natural beauty, if you will, um, and in the form of desirable wildlife um, versus um, people's perceptions of disservices, ecosystem disservices, which are things like aesthetic nuisances um, and undesirable wildlife. And so the shorter question that we're asking with this, this new project that we're undertaking now um, is how are these perceptions of e ecosystem services and disservices um, related to the proximity of where people live um, to different kinds of urban ecological infrastructure. So to do this, what we had to do was think about urban ecological infrastructure, UEI, 
um, from a broad ecological perspective, we divided it up into very broad categories based on the, the ecosystem structures and functions of, of, of each type. Um, the first and most dominant in any city um, is terrestrial UEI. We refer to this as green UEI. Um, and what you're seeing here are four past neighborhoods that are immediately adjacent to our large desert parks and preserves. Um, and so that's their proximity to UEI. We also have three past neighborhoods that you see here, which are immediately proximal to urban parks, urban parks with water and urban parks without water. Um, and then we have four of our um, past neighborhoods that have agriculture embedded within them. And so that's the terrestrial UEI. Um, when we think about aquatic UEI, we are a desert city, so we don't have a whole heck of a lot of water here, but we do have, we do have water. Um, and two of our past neighborhoods are located um, next to or adjacent to um, large permanent lakes. And then when we think about wetlands, um, because I'm a wetland ecologist, from front and foremost, um, I'm very fond of thinking about wetlands. Um, wetlands are either both terrestrial and aquatic or neither terrestrial and aquatic, depending on your perspective. Um, so they get their own category of UEI, which we refer to as turquoise. Um, we have a past neighborhood that is adjacent to restored um, wetlands. We have a past neighborhood that has a large construction we have a neighborhood that is adjacent to accidental wetlands in the Salt River Basin. Um, and so the reason that I'm particularly excited about this as we're thinking about moving into our next uh, renewal proposal um, is, is that it's, it's a deeper way of integrating much of the work that we do here at CAP. Um, we organize ourselves into eight what we refer to as interdisciplinary research teams or IRTs. Um, and five of those eight are very, very focused on urban ecological infrastructure. And so my hope is that this deeper social ecological integration that we're undertaking with this particular project um, is going to further integrate across, at the very least, these five IRTs. And the other thing that this deeper social ecological integration is going to do um, is give us an enhanced opportunity for cross-site urban collaboration and in particular for deeper, um, deeper work with our partners in Baltimore, who I am infinitely confident by this time next year will be refunded. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I think that's it. Thanks very much, Dan. That's great.